Hey y'all, this is Molly Rose and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Have you guys ever got the question asked, do you know how to run backing tracks and click? Well, I have been asked that question. I remember the first time that I got that text message, I was kind of in shock a little bit. I was like, oh my God, this is kind of the new thing that drummers have to know how to run click and backing track for the band because usually as drummers, this has started to fall on us and it can be really stressful and there's not a video like the one that I'm about to show you guys today because I remember when I first got this text message, I panicked and I went on YouTube and I tried to figure it out and there was not a video that was full depth like the one I'm about to give you today. I'm going to teach you guys how to run backing tracks and click all the way through. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do it. After this video, you will know how to do it. And we're going to be doing this on a budget and with stuff that we already have. So we're not gonna be building a thousand dollar rack today. We are going to be doing this on a budget with DI boxes and stuff that hopefully you guys have or stuff that you guys can get really cheap. So let's get into this. So big picture, what are we gonna learn how to do today? We're going to learn how to send the click through a channel and the tracks through a channel all going through Ableton. And this is going to be sent to the sound man because the hardest part about running tracks is getting the click and the track separated. So I'm gonna show you guys how to separate them in Ableton, how to send them to the sound guy. And then the sound guy is going to be sending the click and the track back to the band. And then also I'm gonna show you guys with a personal mixer, how you can control your own click and track yourself because those are the two most important things is the click on the track. So that is the big picture. So this is what you will need. You will need Ableton, one mono DI box, one stereo DI box. And if you don't have those, you can usually get those from the sound person. At least a four channel interface. I will be using the Scarlett 4i4 and I suggest that one or any other more high quality four channel interface, six instrument cables, and I like the shorter ones, four quarter inch TS male to dual quarter inch TS female. It's a weird cable, I'll show you guys what it is. At least a three channel mixer, in-ear cable extender and a pair of in-ears and I have all of this linked down below at Sweetwater. Before we start setting up all of our cables, we're going to open up Ableton and plug in our Scarlett to our laptop and we're going to configure Ableton. If you are using a Scarlett interface, the first thing you need to do before opening up Ableton is we need to configure your Scarlett to Ableton basically to make it work. I don't, I per honestly don't know why you have to do this and it's kind of annoying, but doing this will solve all of your problems. All of the problems I've ever had with running tracks have been in the focus right control. So download the focus right control and just follow along with me, do exactly what I'm doing and it will work. Just trust me, it will work. So in input settings and just have everything set to line and output routing, this is where it's really important to have yours look exactly like mine, okay? So I have analog one and two in the hardware inputs. I labeled that as tracks because those are gonna be my tracks. It's gonna be line one and two. And click, I'm gonna have analog three and four. And how you make that is you just add it over here. Look, just like that. So, and I'm gonna switch that back because we're gonna be running everything stereo. And I have this on stereo and under mono outputs down here, check this out. We have playback one and two as tracks and I labeled it. Click, I have under playback three and four. And remember, just press that plus sign and I have my click muted. I have my click muted because we do not want the click being run to the board. Super, super important. Click is muted. Okay, next, we're gonna go down to the line outputs three and four. We have, oh, and we have both these on custom mix, okay? We have all of them on custom mix. We have this on stereo as well. And we go down, have the same thing down here for software playback. We have the tracks on playback one and two and click on playback three and four. And look, we have, this time, we have the tracks muted, okay? tracks muted on line outputs three and four. We go down one more to loop back one and two and we have this muted. And this is important because I think this has something to do with the click. I don't 100% know what that thing does, but keep it muted, okay? 
And next, we're going to move on to Ableton. We should be all good here. We should be good. Now, when we connect everything and send it to the board, we should be a-okay. And if you're having any problems, make sure you come back and look at this and make sure that you have it exactly the way that I have it. So when you guys open up Ableton, first thing that you guys gotta do is come over to Live, Preferences, and we need to configure everything. So I already have mine configured, but audio input devices, make sure that you have whatever interface you're using and output devices, we have that on the Scarlet. Input configurations, make sure that you guys have mono inputs one and two, three and four, stereo inputs one and two, and then output configurations, we wanna have all of these highlighted, okay? So that's good. Next, we're going to go into our session. I already have mine set up because it's something that I did, but just bear with me and follow along and just make yours look like mine, basically. So up here we have our click and I'm not using a click in Ableton. This is one that's I made and then put into Ableton. So we have in one label this click and we have our extended in. Okay, so make sure that we have this, we're going to be going down channel three. So we're going to be sending our click mono. We do not need our click stereo. And what I mean by mono and stereo, I'll be really fast about it, is stereo is more high quality and you'll need two channels to run stereo. So like this, we have our tracks. I have our tracks going down one and two because we want those to be high quality stereo to the board. So that's why I'm going to be sending our tracks through two channels and that's why I need a stereo DI box. I hope that makes sense. I know it's super confusing, but you'll, you'll understand it once you start doing it. Back to click. We got our click going down three because we have four slots on our interface pretty much. That's a good way to think about it. And we have our extended out and we have that going down three, okay? And this stop track, you guys don't need to worry about that. That's, you don't need that. Again, we're gonna go down to our second part, which is our tracks. We have extended in again, and this time we're gonna be running down stereo one and two, okay? And this will correspond when I show you guys how we're gonna be sending everything to the board. And then this is kind of, you can stop right there. If that's, if you just have tracks and click, you can stop there. But for what I was doing, and I'll show you guys this extra layer, is because I have four channels on my interface, so I'm using one and two for tracks. I'm using three for my click. I have one extra one. And that one extra one for this certain thing I did, I decided to send some background vocals and acoustic guitars down that fourth line. So for this, I have background vocals and acoustic on our line four. So that's just kind of an extra thing, but you will need an extra um, DI box for that. You will need an extra mono DI box for that. So I have this all set up. Next, I'm going to click tab. And basically, as you can see, I have everything set up over here, just how I want it. And then we're gonna come over here to our master. And I have the cue out, I have that on three because that's basically um, your click. So I have that on three because I have my click coming down three. And then I have the master set to one and two. And that should be, that should work, like that should be good. If you guys have any more questions about this, ask down below, but this is how everything is configured in Ableton. And then I'll show you guys how we send it all to the board. Sorry about this kind of wonky setup guys, but let's get into this. So I have my six instrument cables. I have my four Y cables. I have my mixing board, which I have labeled right here. I have click which I'm gonna be putting the click through and splitting it. M-O-N, that is monitor, that I'm gonna be getting a monitor line from the board. And then right here is going to be my tracks. And then over here, I have my Scarlet and I have kind of labeled on here, I have that I'm gonna have my tracks coming through one and two with the stereo DI and click three. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Y cables and I'm just gonna start by splitting these up. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is in the back of here, we don't have to worry 
about the front of the scarlet, guys. This, none of this matters, okay? We're going to go to the back of the scarlet. We have to worry about our line outputs one, two, and three. So this one, these two, and these do not matter, okay? So what I'm gonna start doing is basically splitting the signal so that I can send the tracks through my scarlet to one of my, you see my DIs over there? I know they're kind of hard to see in the picture. So I have my DIs over here. Um, that one right there is going to be my mono DI. And then the two green ones are acting as my stereo DI because I don't have a stereo DI. I just use two DIs. And if you have two mono DIs, you can use that as a stereo DI. But that the sound person will worry about. You really don't have to worry about that. So I take my Y cables and I'm going to put one into line output one is my first Y cable. Second Y cable, I'm going to put into line output two. So this right here is our tracks. And what I'm gonna do is for my third Y cable, right on my little mixing board over here where I have it labeled tracks, you see in the line three and four where it has the left, I'm going to put another one of my Y cables into here. And now I'm going to take my instrument cables and I'm going to split the signal and I'm gonna plug one into here. And then over here in my track one, okay, I'm gonna plug in the other end and there's gonna be cables everywhere y'all, but just bear with me. I'm gonna plug this into line one of my interface. Do you guys see that where I plug that in? So I have the Y cable in here and I have half of the tracks splitting into my mixer so that I can control my own tracks, which is awesome because then I'll be able to control my own tracks and I don't have to rely on the sound guy to do that. I'm gonna take my second instrument cable, okay? I'm gonna plug it into the other part of my Y on my mixer and I'm gonna plug that into my line output to the back of my interface. Plug that into that, okay? So now I have tracks going into my mixer, which is just for me so that I can hear my tracks. And then the next thing that we have to do is we're gonna send the tracks to the board, okay? So that is where you will use the other part of in your interface, the other part of your Y cable. So now I'm gonna take this and plug that into my DI box over there, okay? So check this out. This is going into my stereo DI because we are running our tracks stereo, okay? So that's going into my DI over there and I'm gonna take another instrument cable, I have this blue one, and I'm gonna plug that into line output two on my other tracks line, okay? And then I'm gonna plug this into my stereo DI. And I know we got cables everywhere, just bear with me, y'all. Okay, so now I have my tracks are going over there into my DI box, into my stereo DI, because we're sending the track stereo, and I have them also running right into my mixer. And also, if y'all don't want it to go right into your mixer, then you can just eliminate all of the Y cables and just have them going straight from your interface into the DI boxes. But this is just kind of going a step beyond so that you can really hear what's going on. Next, like I said, we're gonna do, we're gonna do click. So back of our interface, in line output three, this is where our click is gonna go. And we don't need to run the click stereo because it's just click. The click is not gonna go to the audience, it's just going to the band or just to the drummer. So the click does not need to be the best quality ever. So, half my Y cable, and I'm gonna take another one of my instrument cables, plug it into one of them right here, and then I'm gonna go to the click on my mixing board, plugging that in right there. Bam, so now I have the click 
in my mixing board. And now I need to run the click to the sound guy. So I'll take my very last instrument cable and we're gonna go right here into my DI and then we're gonna go into my other side of the Y cable right there. So like I said before, if you don't want this, so basically what this is, is so this is so that you can control your own sound. And I'll have my monitor going right here, but let's say that you want to eliminate this. I could completely eliminate this, okay? And what I would do, I don't need the Y cables, and I could just run my click and stuff. I could just plug it into the back of my interface like that, and then run it straight into the DI box, okay? You got that? So you could, you could eliminate a lot of this if you guys wanted to, but I really suggest if you're running tracks like this and click, just do this because then you'll know for sure that you will have complete control of the click and the track. Okay, so basically, sorry, there's my dogs. Uh, I plugged my speaker into the phone's output on my mixer so that you guys could see that this works and what I'm talking about, okay? so. I have Ableton ready to go in here. I have it all configured. I have everything. Remember, my tracks are going to be coming out of one and two. My click is going to be coming out of three. So when I play this, you will be able to see that I can control my click and my tracks. And if you can do that, because basically what we're trying to do is make sure that they're separated, then I know that I did this right. So let's try it, okay? So we're just gonna play a track over here. Okay, we hear click and track. I have my click and track turned up. Check this out. I'm gonna turn click all the way down. Turn my click back on. I'm gonna turn my tracks down. So I just proved that what I did was correct. And if you can do that on your mixing board, then you know that you have sent the click and the track correctly to the board and you guys are good to freaking go. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I know that it was maybe a little confusing and there's a lot of cables and a lot of steps and I know that it's a lot, but this is just kind of the DIY fast. You don't wanna start building a rack. You get a last minute call and you wanna just kind of scrounge together some stuff. This is a good way just to start out doing tracks also. Um, because it just gets more confusing from here and it's actually kind of cool that you can split um, So that you can get the track and the click yourself and control in the mixer, which is pretty cool So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I am now a Sweetwater affiliate So I have a link to all of the stuff that you will need to buy um, Down below on Sweetwater and please order it through that affiliate code It really helps me out and if you guys have any questions, please please comment them I will do my absolute best to help you guys um, DM me video on Instagram. If you guys have questions at Molly Rose Drums, I usually respond the fastest on Instagram. My TikTok is Country Drummer Girl. And go Ableton away, guys. Have fun. <laughs>